And this is where we'll get into oh boy. Philadelphia and its future. After the game, Joel Embiid was asked about James Harden. Joel is quoted per Rich Hoffman of The Athletic as saying, we got an unfinished job. We haven't won anything. And I think we got the chance to win. Obviously, going to seven games and having a chance to close it out at home, which we didn't do. I still believe we got the chance to win. We got what it takes to win. So obviously, I don't know what's going on. I know he has a player option or they can extend him, but that's on the front office to figure out. I'm going to stay out of it. But I still think that between or I still believe that me and him, we got the chance to win. But it's going to could it's gonna take more than us. We gotta look at ourselves. I gotta be better and I will be better. That's what I'm focused on. All of this, we got to come back and find ways to just keep improving and help the team. We can't win alone. I can't win alone. Me and James, we just can't win alone. That's why basketball is played five on five. So we just need everybody to just trying to keep finding ways to get better and we'll be fine. This is a wild quote after that James Harden game. I'm sorry. I love Joel Embiid. This is an insane, this is a crazy quote to me after what James Harden just did in this game. In what way? James Harden was the reason that they like were terrible on offense in this game, I thought. Look, strategy too, right? But James Harden was dreadful in this game. For him to act like James Harden, you know, we can't do it on our own. When, frankly, Tobias Harris was, I thought, okay in mm -hmm. this game. He goes one for seven from three. But he has 19 points on 13 shots. He has five rebounds. Throughout the course of the playoffs, Tobias Harris, I think, averaged like 15 points on 50, 40, 85 shooting. Tobias was fine. Like, it wasn't on him, right? Agreed. Like. Tyrese Maxey goes for 20.9 points in the playoffs, shoots 42% from the field, 40% from three, 88.5% from the line. Maxey was fine in the playoffs. He was. They need depth, like unequivocally, I guess. The conference semifinals were a little bit worse for Maxey. Like he went for 20 points, 40% from the field, 35 from three, 95 from the line. But like Maxey was okay, I thought. In this series. Yeah. They need depth. Yeah. I, I'm not going to deny Joel's case here. That they need depth. They do. You can't rely on playing Daniel House six minutes. You, you know, you can't rely on essentially having six players that you trust. Including yeah. DeAnthony Melton with the starters. And then having Paul Reed as your backup center that spells Joel for a few minutes here and there. Can't do it. They, they need agree. depth. Completely agree. But I, I don't know how you act like it, it can't just be me and James. When over the last two games, James Harden in four in 84 minutes combined for 22 points, 16 assists, and 10 turnovers. It's not great, Sam. That's uh that's not a great number. Look, it, it's it is very it doesn't make a lot of sense timing wise to claim that, Hey, we, the stars need help when the stars kind of lost their individual matchups or were outplayed by other stars in a certain regard, but, or were specifically exploited in the way that Joel was tonight. That's the thing for me is I would want to see a little bit more. I don't necessarily want to call it personal accountability, but when you're the star, win or lose, you kind of own that, right? You know, in, to a certain extent, you kind of own that. And I, I don't want to see, even though we can agree, they need they need help. They need more depth. They need a couple more shooters. They need a difference around P.J. Tucker, who just provided them a real uh, schematic disadvantage on the offensive end of the floor. Like there's more that this Sixers team needs in order to break through that that ceiling that they have right now. But I don't know if it's a time and place right after a game seven loss when, you know, another guy just dropped 50 on you and, and you were struggling to guard him. I don't know if it's the right time for that. Okay. Next part of this. <laughs> James Harden does have this player option that Joel alluded to. He did. The $35 million player option. 
I have no idea what they're going to do with him, to be honest. I just don't. I, I would have real hesitancy about bringing him back. But you also kind of have to. Like, you're locked in to this. Unless you want to completely rebuild everything around Joel over the next two years, because it's probably what it would take. Really, really over next year. They're in a circumstance right now where if they really wanted to, and I don't think this is necessarily the best idea because I think that Joel would probably get very frustrated by this. They could kind of clear the books around Joel a little bit. If Tyrese Maxey next season for 4.3 million and then he is extension eligible, I believe that his cap hold in 2024-25, look, it's hard to say what the cap hold is going to be, if only because the new CBA, we don't totally know how the cap hold situation will work. I believe that his cap hold is like 13-ish million because he was a later first round pick. much. Don't think it's a wildly high cap hold. Um, you could have Joel at 50. You have this PJ Tucker player option for 11 million. And then you could have Maxi, you could not extend him, and you have Maxi for 13. So you're basically at 74 million when the cap is projected to be 144 moving forward. Those are the only guys that you would have under contract. Hmm. Tobias Harris's contract expires. Harden has this player option that we'll figure out what he's going to do at some point. That's, you know, DeAnthony Melton's contract expires after next season. He's extension eligible. Do you try to move on? and rebuild a new roster around these guys? Or do you use Tobias Harris's contract, which is expiring now and is probably reasonably valuable in the trade market, use maybe, you know, Tyrese Maxey to try and go star hunting, or use you know, D'Anthony Melton in whatever way you can. How do you approach this off season? Do you try and trade your way to a different roster? Or do you let some guys go, take a step back for a season, and then hope that somebody is willing to come play with Joel? I don't know the answer to that one. I, to be honest with you, I think Joel's got to have a lot of input in that uh, to try to figure out what's the path of least resistance for him as a superstar. I think his his input is going to be necessary for some of that. But I don't really know. Um, you know, I, I think the, the middle road to this is to try to bring back Harden for one or, or two years, however, gets them to that point, and then try to move on and clear the books then. You can still run it back for a year or two. Uh, with this group that you have, maybe make a, a smaller tweak on the fringes, add some of that depth, and then still have the ability for the full reset in another year or so. Uh, but I think Embiid's got to play a really important role in determining what the future is going to be. I agree that it's Joel's choice. And I actually think that you have to do the trade route because you really risk way too much otherwise. I know that Joel just signed that extension. And we're sitting in a circumstance where he still has three years left on his contract. I would not want to take an enormous step back. Joel seems like the kind of guy that does not want to take an enormous step back. I think you have to go see what's out on the trade market for Tobias Harris. I mentioned Damian Lillard as a potential trade option that Knicks fans mainly one very prominent Knicks fan, Stephen A. Smith uh, mentioned on TV after the Miami Heat defeated the New York Knicks. If you're Portland, 
you're probably more excited about a Tyrese Maxey, Tobias Harris trade structure for Damian Lillard plus a million picks or whatever than you are an Emmanuel quickly, RJ Barrett, et cetera, trade structure, right? I think so. I think there might be a little bit of redundancy with Maxi and Anthony Simons, but like you, that shouldn't hold up why you do what you do. Um, I don't know if either of them move the needle enough, but I'm probably, I agree. I'm more excited about Phillies. It's a good question. Like Tyrese is going to get expensive here. Would you rather have RJ Barrett on a four year one Oh four deal, whatever that is? Or Tyrese Maxey on what will probably be like a four-year 110, 115 with some inflation um, when he signs this deal. Yeah, it's a that's a tough one. I think it depends on who you have around him. Like, a, again, with Simons already in play, I might think Barrett brings just something additional to the table. But yeah, I tend to like Maxey maybe a little bit more as a player. I'm not sure. I do too. And you get the extra year on Maxey as well. Yeah. Yeah. In that circumstance. Mm -hmm. But again, doesn't really fit with Simons at a super high level. I wonder if they're going to get a better offer just straight up from somebody else if yeah. they decide to make that route. And by the way, Damian Lillard has not asked for a trade. I don't think Portland will trade him unless he asks out. So there is no reason to believe at this point that that will be the case. I do think that my point here, though, is that Tobias Harris is a real potential trade chip now is there a chance that someone like trey young comes available is there a chance that someone like bradley beal comes available does toronto decide to make some sort of crazy move involving pascal siakam og ananobi There are some real potential options out there. I think that you use Tobias Harris's contract in order to acquire somebody else. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I see that. I see the math. The math is mathing for me now. So Gregory Castillo brings up an interesting question. I think Charlotte matches up with somebody for a trade this off season because they have interesting depth pieces that can actually help teams that are competing. They just don't have the guys that like can actually get you to the level of competing right now, especially since miles bridges missed this season. Is there a world where like taking a swing on Gordon Hayward plus other stuff, you know, Terry Rozier, Cody Martin, etc., helps a Harden and Bead team more than what Tobias Harris is bringing. I think there's definitely a chance of that. The, my, I like Tobias Harris quite a bit as a player. I think he gets an unnecessarily bad rap a lot of the time. But the fit between him and PJ Tucker has not been ideal to me. That I, I think. Tobias does much better when he's playing a little bit more of the four, so to speak, when you we you can put the ball in his hands a little bit more and it's not two guys along the baseline that are kind of non-shooters with Embiid and the dunker spotter on the block and then Tucker in the corner. Like there, there are just other ways that I would maneuver things to get the most out of Tobias. Hayward does sound like a pretty good fit in some regard, but it does very much feel like a one-year Band-Aid and then we're back to square one if it doesn't work. I think that is right. But the benefit of that one-year Band-Aid potentially is it is a change-up that then continues to allow you that flexibility that I was talking about for next offseason maybe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's there's options. And Daryl Morey is uh, as shrewd as it comes in examining what those can be and finding a way to maximize the value for his team out of them. Yeah, and there are other options in that vein, like DeMar DeRozan. Does Chicago look to move him, or do they look to maintain the status quo? Yeah. 
I, I'm not totally sure. We'll talk about Chicago momentarily. I want to run something by you uh, mm-hmm. in the Phoenix section. It is somewhat difficult, though, to find the second star at the very least to play next to Joel if it's not James. I think that is where it gets difficult if James Harden departs because ultimately a lot of what we're talking about here depends entirely on James Harden's decision. You know, there were rumors earlier in the season that like he might just go back to Houston. Right. By the way, like if I'm Houston, I don't think I want James Harden, frankly. Not after this. No, I don't think so. Nonetheless, like I don't see that as valuable for them. I would rather Honestly, given that James Harden going to Houston would probably cost $40 million per year or something like that, I would probably rather have Austin Reeves for 480 than have the other $20 million in cap space than James Harden. Because James Harden, to me, seems like a skipping steps move. Austin Reeves would help Jalen Brown or Jalen Green develop with his, you know, ability to manage reasonable defensive assignments. He's not a great defender. He's fine defensively. Smart processor of the game. I think he would empower a lot of their players at a high level to be great. James Harden's going to take possessions from Jalen Green. Maybe that's a good thing, but I'm not convinced that he is the best player to do that for them. Yeah. I don't, I don't love the, the fit for a lot of reasons there. It it screams nostalgia tour. And I don't know what, what what does Houston get out of a James Harden reunion? I'm not, I'm not really sure yet. And, And as I broke down on the last show, you know, the Lakers aren't trading Austin Reeves. Austin Reeves is a restricted free agent. The Lakers can only offer him 455. He can go out and get an offer sheet from somebody that will be greater than 455. I think somebody will give him that offer sheet that is yep. greater than that amount of money that is essentially 13 and a half million per year. I think he will get a Renus rule offer sheeted and thus will then need to make a decision. The Lakers will need to make a decision on if they want to pay Austin Reeves, you know, $20 million a year, $22 million a year, whatever it is. If I'm the Lakers, I pay that and I'm ecstatic to do it. We will see if the Lakers do that, given that they have D'Angelo Russell, Rui Achimura, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, that are coming off of the books this year. Um, But yeah, the the Harden thing is fascinating, man. Because like, if it's not Houston, who is the team for Harden? I don't know. And you'd think that would give Philly maybe some leverage, but they've got to make a decision pretty quickly going into this. They've got to know what their plan of attack is before draft night, before all the stuff comes. And it just, it does feel a little bit like they're stuck between a rock and a hardened place. I'm going to ignore that. So hear me out. I don't think I would do this for Philly. I think there are probably better options for Philly. And you can't really do it this way if you're Phoenix. Because if you're Phoenix, Harden would have to opt in as opposed to taking a longer deal because you can't sign and trade for anybody if you're Phoenix. Right. Because they're way, way, way over the money at this point. And they will be way over the money in terms of the harder spot or in terms of like signing and trading people, yeah, you yeah. can't be over the apron if you want to sign and trade for somebody. I need to explain that better. Sorry. Um, if you are Phoenix, are you willing to try and get James Harden? Uh, am I willing? If Kevin Durant would ever want that again. Maybe. Yeah. I, I don't know if that's true or not, by the way. I agree with that. But is there like a Chris Paul, James Harden thing where James Harden tells Philadelphia, I'll opt in if you can make a sign and trade move here work. Uh, if not, I'm going to opt out and sign elsewhere. 
is there a world where Phoenix would do something like this? Do they have a, no, they don't have their pick this year. Um, they don't really have any young guys either. Like uh, Chris Paul, <laughs> you at least maintain the salary slot for James Harden. Yeah. If James Harden tells you he's going to leave, so you have Chris Paul on the roster, you can then maybe move Chris Paul elsewhere. I'm just kind of trying to find creative answers as much as anything to a very difficult problem to solve. Yeah, I just I don't know if Phoenix is is that spot. Like it it does very much feel like that old what was it the Chris Paul Russell Westbrook deal of like let's trade our aging guy for your aging guy and just hope it works better than what we currently have. Yeah, yeah I don't see that as a winning proposition for either side. So I, I don't know. I think it'd be winning for Phoenix. I will say that because I just don't trust James or I don't trust Chris Paul to get through a playoff series at this point. And the only way that this works is if James Harden tells you ahead of time, I will opt out. I will leave you and you will get nothing for me because I am going to sign in Houston instead of going to a winner. Can we make something work? That's the leverage there that's 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 it right there a potential leverage play from james harden there are a lot of things that could manage themselves to work out i don't think that's a great idea for philly it just maintains the salary slot which is important for them moving forward because they lose harden they're taking a step back next year there's not another kind of answer on the market right you just can't really make it work that way so it is difficult to find an answer for Philly if James Harden departs. They have to hope James Harden stays. That's it. it like it, it always comes down to how clean are the books, right? Like it, it's it's much more of a cap management thing than just talent. And and that's the complicated part as soon as you build a, a, an expensive roster is you can't just subtract one piece because you got to figure out how you're going to replace it first. Yeah, Nicholas Martino asks, is Harden to the Magic for a collection of pieces, Fultz, Gary Harris, Chumo Kiki, and the Bulls 2023 first round pick, a win for both sides? I don't have any idea why Orlando would do that. Um, that That is a lot of valuable pieces, point blank. Uh, yeah. James Harden, who doesn't fit your age timeline when Paulo Bancaro, Franz Wagner, whoever you draft with their own pick this year, uh, Wendell Carter, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, Jalen Suggs, whoever, when those guys are willing to win or are capable of winning. Yeah. I, I don't see yeah. Orlando even considering that. Um, all this is moot. If James Harden just, uh, just decides we're going to stay in Philly and we're going to let this rock again. And then they have to figure out the Tobias Harris thing, right? Yeah. Maybe. The Tobias Harris thing is tricky, though, as we've kind of talked about already. I think Tobias was fine on defense in this yeah. series, too, by the way. They're they're kind of backed into a corner. Again, they're, they're stuck between a rock and a hardened place. They can't let him go and just replace him with nothing. But this is the Are you trying to get me to title have. the episode stuck between a rock and a hardened place. I maybe, maybe I'll comment. title the YouTube video that stuck I between a rock and a hardened place. I cannot confirm okay. or deny. So our conclusions here are they need James Harden to return essentially, right? They can't let him go for nothing. They can't let him go for nothing. And then if James Harden leaves, you have to try and swing another superstar using the Tobias Harris contract. If James Harden stays, you're probably trying to swing a depth trade using the Tobias Harris contract, right? Probably. Yeah. And hope it doesn't have to involve Tyrese Maxey, right. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, who I think they would hope that they are able to keep. Yeah, yeah. If, if you're going to keep Harden and run this thing back, you need Maxi. You absolutely need his burst, his speed, his shooting ability. That's to me, that's a given to, to get the most out of Harden next year. I agree. Uh, Eric Weiss 
good friend of the program brings up what does Harden yeah. want career wise? Does he want, uh, does he care about winning a ring or is he cool taking whoever pays him the most important to know? I think that's dead on. I, I don't, I don't know. I think that we're going to find out the answer to that this off season. Last off season, I think we found out the answer to it was that he wanted to try and win. We'll see if that remains true. Yeah. Uh, this off season, last off season, he clearly wanted to win. Now coming off of this, we'll see. I think I'm not sure what the answer is on that. 